This is Burn Peak, my backyard and the site of a future home mountain bike park. So far, we dug a climbing trail from behind my garage to the highest point on the property. It's called the Burn Peak Express. At the top, we cleared out a trailhead and built the flight deck, an elevated platform for rolling in on. This flight deck is the high point where all our downhill trails will start. Today, we'll figure out what those trails might look like. Now that I've hiked through here a few dozen times, I know it like my own backyard. I recognize the trees, the topography, and all the landmarks. But to show you what I'm talking about, we'll need a map. This white border is the property boundary of Burn Peak. To the north is Moonshangle Thickets, which is very steep and packed with rhododendron. To the south is Stumpthorn, which is where we'll be building our first trails. It also contains the highest point on the property, which according to my phone is 2,323 feet. The low point of the property is down here, in the Moonshangle Panhandle. Assuming my phone's barometer is at least accurate relative to itself, we have a total of 127 feet of elevation change from the highest to lowest point on Burn Peak. This is a very imperfect topographic map of Burn Peak. If you were to pedal your mountain bike along one of these lines, you would be on a flat traverse. Pedal across the lines and you're climbing or descending. If we wanted to build a really fast downhill trail, we would go perpendicular to the lines. That's called a fall line, and it's exactly what we did on Burm Creek. That run was over in a matter of seconds, so I think we can do better this time. If we avoid fall lines and zigzag our way down the hill, we can make our downhill trail a lot longer. Such a trail would start at the flight deck, wind its way across the slope, and make its way to the lowest point on Stumpthorn. That's pretty much next to my driveway. To make this trail a loop, we'll connect it with a climbing trail, which will be named, you guessed it, Burn Peak Express. In the end, Burn Peak Express will have a lower, middle, and upper segment that climb the full property. As for our first downhill trail, excavation starts today. A bunch of you suggested I use bright sprinkler flags to mark the trail. And I think that's a good idea. The flags are highly visible and really easy to collect later on. On turns, we need a lot of flags. And on straightaways, we need almost none. I'm starting by very roughly clearing corridor. For this first pass, the machete seems to be the best tool, since it's lightweight and fast. When I remove a shrub, I leave the stump extra long so it's clearly visible when coming back through. To remove the stump entirely, I just pull away the topsoil around it, stick the reciprocating saw on the ground, and cut in a circle. I've been removing these little stumps in under a minute with the reciprocating saw method. And unless I find a way that takes 30 seconds, I'll continue to do so. While this little saw is safe, lightweight, and great for the small stuff, there are some things it just won't cut. actually sounds like a power wheel. While this battery powered chainsaw may not have a throaty exhaust note, it does have plenty of torque and eats up anything I throw at it. Johnny from Crafted Workshop lent it to me, and he's not getting it back without a fight. But I stand by my original decision to use the reciprocating saw for group trail work. 
For safety and liability reasons, I can't be passing this thing around to friends like it's a rake. The fiberglass trail markers I ordered haven't arrived just yet, but for this trail, a wooden sign is very appropriate. The name Woodpecker will make a lot more sense as we progress down the slope. Once we're finished clearing corridor, we can improve the trail and build features. We'll keep working up here in Stumpthorn until we've learned all we can, and then take our lessons to Moonshangle, where the topography is much more challenging. For now, this map is just a place for ideas. Oh man, that looks awesome and it's already got the screw holes. Yeah. I think I have some stainless pan head screws for that. Oh, this is sick. <laughs> My friend Stu used the CNC plasma cutter to make this sign for the flight deck, and it looks awesome. I'm mounting it off to the right to leave space for a roll-in. You know, a roll-in, instead of a six-foot hook to flat. After installing that sign, I got sidetracked and started thinking about what this roll-in might look like, and ultimately took a break from Woodpecker to do some testing. That was a little steep. <laughs> Dude. I'm gonna try that again. One of the most unsafe people I've ever met in my life. I'm sure there's a true science to cranking out perfect mountain bike features. But for me, it's all done by trial and error. I really thought I was gonna be able to do that. Okay, that worked. I'll never build anything I wouldn't ride myself unless Phil's in town. To get this roll in just right, I need to figure out a grade where it's rollable, but just barely. When your only voice of reason is Kevin, you're in big trouble. Ultimately, we decided to dial it back to 126% grade and get to work. This is a lot like the roll-in on the other side of the flight deck, except a little narrower and probably not so easy to climb. I know this roll-in doesn't lead anywhere except for Burn Peak Express, but it'll be a fun way to get back home after a long day of building. It was almost dark out when we finished the rolling, so I'm not proud of my first attempts or the janky edges on the planks. But the following morning, I cleaned her up and gave it another shot. This roll-in feels awesome. You get way behind your seat, and once your front tire hits the ground, it all just works. I'm calling it the Pucker Plank, and crediting a very clever Instagram follower for that name. While the Pucker Plank doesn't get us anywhere now, it does give us plenty of speed for the future Moonshangle trails, which will start before the first turn on Upper Burn Peak Express. As you can see, this is all a work in progress. The last seven videos have all been Burn Peak related, so we might need to switch things up a little moving forward. Still, building this backyard trail is my main priority. Now that we have a loose plan in place, all the tools we need, and a solid rolling, our only limitations are the boundaries of this property. By the looks of it, we barely scratched the surface. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.